The fourth application of Leonard models we're going to consider involves Newton's law of cooling and warming. You'll recall that that law has this particular form where capital T represents temperature, little t represents time, and the change of temperature with respect to time can be modeled as a constant of proportionality k times this difference, the current temperature minus the temperature in the medium, how, how it differs from, say, room temperature or water or whatever the medium that your the object is, is is in and then of course time is marching forward in the positive domain so the example and the application that we're going to consider of this law is right here we're going to look at the case of a cake let's suppose a cake is removed from the oven and you remove it at 300 degrees when you pull it out 300 degrees fahrenheit let it sit and notice that after three minutes it's cooled down to about 200 degrees fahrenheit and the question that we want to ask is, well, then how long would it take in minutes uh, for the cake to reach the room temperature so that it's completely cooled down to room temperature and you're, for example, ready to cut it and serve it? All right. So applying the law, in this particular case, we know that the temperature in the medium, or room temperature in this case, is 70. We'll assume all degrees is Fahrenheit, so we will just write 70 there. And so the problem we're trying to solve then is this differential equation, capital D with respect to little t, is a constant of proportionality times t minus 70 with the initial condition that the cake is initially at 300 degrees. But we also have some other information which is going to be very helpful in determining what that constant of proportionality is, is that we know that after three minutes the cake has been cooled to 200 degrees. <clears throat> All right. So if we just look at the equation itself, it's easy to see that it's separable, and you could rewrite it in this form, that capital uh, D, uh, the derivative with respect to T, the differential DT over T minus 70 could be written as the constant proportionality times D little t. Right? That's just separating the equation uh, like we normally would. And then, in this case, you could do your integration and so forth, and we know that we would get something in this form, the natural log of the quantity and absolute value t minus 70 is going to be that constant proportionality t plus some integration constant, right? And of course, we know that time is moving forward, and we know we're not going to cool below 70 degrees. We'll be able to remove those absolute values and eventually you could show that the solution has this particular form. This we already know how to do. I'm just taking some of the steps out to get to the fact that we would produce a solution that had an exponential form added to that room temperature, 70. Right? Now again, we'd have everything we want except we need to find out what, the, uh, to, what k is and we need to find what c2 is. We don't know what those two constants are. Now, we do know that we can, we have initial condition. We know that the cake initially was at 300 degrees and at time zero. So if we plug that in to the uh, solution equation, we have C2 times E to the K times zero power. E to the, that will be E to the zero, which is one. That quickly tells us that the constant would then have to be 230. So that's simple enough. Um, so, at that point, we now know that the cooling temperature behaves this way. It's 70 plus 230 degrees times e to some constant kt. Right? Almost there. Now, again, you need not some other information, but we also know that after three minutes that the temperature is 200. So now plug that into the equation for t equal 3, set it equal to 200 we would get 230 times e to the k times 3 power like that. And a um, little reduction would give us 130 then is going to be 230 times e to the 3k. Then using logarithms, you can show that, um, this is k here, that k would have to be one-third the natural log of 13 over 223. And that's going to be about equal to minus, it's going to be negative because this value is going to be less than 1, negative 0 0.19018.
which makes sense because we need to have this decay down to zero so that the solution eventually will go to 70. And so ultimately, the cooling function or how temperature changes with respect to time is just what? 70 plus 230 times E to the negative 0 0.19018 T power. And this is true now for time marching forward T0. And you could, to answer the question, well, how long does it take to reach room temperature, is basically saying, when is this term right here? Because notice what's going to happen. As time goes to infinity, this is negative, right? 0.19 times T. Eventually, this whole term will go to zero, and you'll hit 70. So how small does this have to be, is what you're concerned about relative to 70, to say you're practically at room temperature. So if you were to draw a graph, we'll just push the equation over here um, and just drew a graph. And let this be time marching forward there and let this be the temperature in Fahrenheit. So this is in degrees Fahrenheit. You know you start at 300 degrees. That's about halfway down. Room temperature is about 70 there. You know from the looking at the solution that asymptotically it's going to go to 70. The question is it's just about where does it get really close to it. Turns out you could if you set this equal to 70 and solved for it, you'd see it'd be about 30 minutes later. So this is initially how the cake is, and exponentially it kind of goes down like this. And so the answer is about 30 minutes. 30 minutes. To room temperature. That's a very nice application of Newton's law of cooling and warming.